Welcome to my latest space weather update for the 17th of July 2022. Today's specialist subject is going to be transequatorial loops and why they are important to the solar cycle. I'm sorry I've been out of touch for a while, but we've had some local weather problems, namely an EF1 tornado hit our complex. You can see some of the pictures of all the downed trees and power lines in the area. We've been without power for five days and without internet for seven. Fortunately, nobody was hurt and there was little property damage. Here's the summary chart that I posted on Twitter this morning. The sunspot number had been increasing steadily for several days, but took a short drop to 145. That's still a fairly high number. We were higher now in sunspot number than we were at the same time last rotation. The overall average sunspot number for the month so far is over 100. Geospace number two here is generally quiet. The KP index varying between zero and three. The solar wind speed has dropped to 460 kilometers per second. The GOES X-ray background is fairly high at C1. We've had lots of minor C flares and one M1 flare late yesterday. That M1 flare came from the southwest limb region 3055. We have eight regions on the sun at the moment. Two are about to go over the limb, so sunspot numbers will likely drop again tomorrow. There may be something coming over the northeast limb, but it's not looking too promising at the moment. Yesterday we had 10 C flares, most of which were very small, two M flares, no X flares, and nine CMEs. Well, let's first take a look at some eruptions seen in the Helium-2304 channel. It's a two-day movie from the SDO AIA instrument. The Helium-2 line is from the transition region at about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. Solar activity has been picking up the last few days. In the last week, we've had 38 C flares, three M flares, and 26 CMEs from a variety of regions. So let's look at a high temperature movie, this time the Iron 20 movie. So this is a temperature of about 10 million degrees. There are some neat features on the sun at the moment. This is a compendium picture made up of three SDO AIA channels, 171, 193, and 211. The first thing you notice is this large dark area in the Eastern Hemisphere, which is a large coronal hole stretching almost from limb to limb. Coronal holes are dark because they are low density and low temperature, so do not emit many X-rays or ultraviolet for that matter. These coronal holes are important because they produce high-speed solar wind. And in about a week's time, this, or at least we're magnetically well connected to the Earth, so we could be subjected to a series of high-speed wind streams, which could cause geomagnetic storms. So keep an eye out for that. Another thing that's clearly visible at the moment is the North Polar region. That's because the B angle of the sun is about four and a half degrees. That means the North Pole of the sun is tilted towards us by about four and a half degrees. You can see there's a coronal hole up there as well, and it's surrounded by a dark region, which is the, what is called the polar crown filament. These are interesting because sometimes they erupt, sometimes the whole thing can erupt, which is, can be quite spectacular. But it marks the boundary between the positive field in one area and the negative field in another. That's where filaments form. But the thing to note really here is how large this coronal hole is at the pole. That's a good indicator that we're nowhere near solar maximum yet because that polar coronal hole disappears at solar maximum. There was a filament that erupted you saw in the last movie and that is filament is now reformed and could go again. So let's keep an eye on that. But for today's subject, we're gonna talk about transequatorial loops. And here you can see two active regions on the sun, the bright areas connected by a set of very, very large 100,000 kilometer or more length magnetic loops. And they're in different hemispheres, so they're opposite polarities to one another. 
So there's been some sort of magnetic connection in, to create these loops. And that actually is one of the ways that the next cycle is set up. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at the sun as it is currently. We have areas of positive and negative field. We'll say that the northern polar region is negative and the, and the northern hemisphere is positive. And along that boundary between those two is where the polar crown filament forms. So now let's put a sunspot region here in the northern hemisphere with negative leading and positive trailing. And then do the same in the southern hemisphere, but of course reversed as they would be. But every now and then they interact across the equator like this. So say the leading spots start to cancel the magnetic field. What happens then is that there's a, some excess trailing region magnetic field left over in each hemisphere. So as the rest of these sunspots are cancelled out, you can see there would be a uh, negative area in the southern hemisphere and a positive area in the northern hemisphere that's left over, excess. Now what happens then, there's a flow from the equator towards the pole. It's very slow, it takes months or years to take transport material from the, the lower latitudes to the pole, but it's still there. So this meridional flow will capture the magnetic field left over from those sunspots and start to take them towards the pole. But of course you can see that the pole is a different polarity from the uh, surrounding fields. So when it gets there, what it does is it cancels with the uh, polar region magnetic field, making this, the north polar region smaller and equivalently the south uh, polar region smaller. So at solar maximum, what has happened is so many of these excess uh, trailing region spots have been taken to the pole that the northern polar coronal hole is destroyed and the same for the south. So you have a situation like this. Now it's still producing sunspots and these same excesses will continue. So now the opposite polarity will start building up in the polar regions over the declining phase of the solar cycle until you get to solar minimum when you have this situation, the reverse of what we started. We have an, a positive northern polar region where we had a negative one before. And of course we'd have a negative uh, southern polar region where we had a positive before. And as new sunspots build up, the same process will take over, slowly destroying them until you get to the next maximum. So these trans-equatorial magnetic fields are very important in setting up this new cycle. So in summary then, the sun has become more active in the last week, more flares and more coronal mass ejections. It looks like there's a huge coronal hole on its way uh, that will impact us next week. And we're seeing trans-equatorial coronal holes that are important in forming the next cycle and we haven't yet reached solar maximum because we still have a strong polar coronal hole. So thank you for watching and I hope you will remain safe and until next time, goodbye.